بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله in the hadith of Abi Dhar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an Abi Dhar Jundib ibn Junadata wa Abi Abdurrahman Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma an Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال اتقوا الله حيثما كنت واتبع سيئات الحسنة تمهها وخالق الإنسان وخالق الناس بخلق حسن روحه ترمدي In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith of Abi Dhar and the hadith of Abdurrahman Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Fear Allah wherever you are. So Allah, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam exhorted us to fear Allah wherever you are, in, in all places and in all times, and in all of our affairs. And following up bad deeds with good deeds erases them, it expiates them. And treat people with excellent manners. And this hadith is in a tirmidhi. In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, there are immense fawaid. As with all the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but especially those hadith which illustrate the jawami al-kalam of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the ahadith which show which are short in words and immense in ma'ana in immense and their meaning and in this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began by saying Ittaqillah Ittaqillah haythma kunt Fear Allah wherever you are So that lets us know that without exception The Muslim is not restricted to living in Saudi Arabia and fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or being in Mecca and Medina and fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or being in a Muslim land and only fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or only being in the masjid or only being around the believers but rather the believer is ordered as the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions all throughout the Quran to fear Allah it took Allah mistata'atum fear Allah as much as you can and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the sifat, the characteristics of the muttaqin, the believers, those people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people who adhere to the commandments of Allah and refrain from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from. And this is taqwa. This is taqwa. So we are ordered to practice taqwa, taqwa Allah azza wa jal, wherever we are. It's not restricted to a place, a time, But rather, wherever the Muslim is, wherever the believer is, they must fear Allah as much as possible. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, 
the hasana and follow up your neg your your sins with good uh, with with righteousness with good deeds and we know that the hasana that the good deeds are encompassing all encompassing of good deeds those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows and those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that all of those things and what was articulated on the tongue of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of that is good. And all of that is from hasana. And so following up something sinful, if you do something sinful, and all of us do sin, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullu ibn Adam khatta wa khayran khatta'ina tawabun. All the children of Adam make sins, and the best of those who sin are those who repent. So knowing that we all sin, all of us are disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that all of us are in need of tawbah, and all of us are in need of following up the sayyat with hasana, following up the uh, sinful deeds, sinfulness, with righteousness. And the Prophet sallallahu said, and it expiates, it expiates it, meaning, that when you do the sinful deed, but you follow it up with something righteous, praying rakatain, doing some sadaqa, doing some righteous act, something that is pleasing to Allah, something that brings happiness and joy to the creation, that this will help expiate those sins. This is an expiation for sins. And Then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and then treat the people with excellent uh, treatment. So we know that from the excellent manners is giving salams, and from the excellent manners is that we are respectful to one another, and from the excellent manners is that we have husn al that we have uh, a positive, unpessimistic, outlook towards one another that we're not looking and always looking to negative and looking to find negative about people but rather we are looking to construe things in a positive way this is the from the sifat of the mu'minin of the believers and some of the immense fawaid of this hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam is we see first that this hadith shows us the fadl and the imp the importance of you know the superiority and the importance of having righteous manners and doing good deeds and also this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also shows us the importance of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that this is the affair of the mu'min because taqwa ahabatifillah is to put between yourself and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a barrier and that barrier is doing righteous deeds and avoiding prohibitions. That this is taqwa Allah Another immense benefit of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that this hadith shows us that people are in great need of da'wah ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that people need to be reminded to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began by ordering with what? Ittaqillaha. He said, and fear Allah. He commanded. And when we have a command, we know that it is something that is an obligation for us to do. Another benefit I want to mention 
With regards to this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, is the importance of following up your bad deeds with something good. Following up those sinful acts, if you were backbiting, if you committed a major sin, for whatever you do, this is an exhortion. This, sin, this hadith is exhorts us to do righteous deeds, to do good deeds, and especially under the situation in which we have committed a sin. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal, subhanahu wa ta'ala by his divine names and attributes to forgive us of our many, many, many sins. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm, al-nafi'ah, wa rizqin tayyibah, wa amalim al-taqabbilan, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.